What's going on horror fans and welcome to an end of the year video. If you guys are new here, feel free to click that subscribe button and that bell notification icon for more reviews, reactions, rankings, and more movie content. 2019 is very soon coming to a close guys. Everybody is doing their end of the year list, including me starting it up right now. If you guys haven't seen yet, I did do my ranking for all of the superhero slash comic book movies I saw this year a while back. You can check it out on my channel. And today for you guys, I'm going to be giving you guys my ranking for all of the horror movies that I have seen in 2019. I didn't see every single horror movie that came out this year. There are a few that I did miss that are on Netflix and other streaming services, but for the most part, all the horror movies that I have seen this year will be in the description box down below. There's 22 films to rank here, guys, and how I did this is I went on my letterbox page and I searched up all the movies that had the word horror in their genre on letterbox. Not all of these movies are pure horror movies. Some of them are psychological thrillers and also some are horror comedies. And that's a factor. If on Letterboxd that movie says horror in the genre, then it counts for this ranking. We got 22 films to rank here, guys. I want you guys down below in the comment section to talk with me. Let me know all the horror movies you saw this year and what your ranking is. And the biggest thing, guys, is this list is completely subjective. These are just my opinions. This is my list overall. Our lists are not going to be the same. I 100% guarantee that. We're going to have different lists, different opinions, and please respect my opinion and I will respect yours as well. Coming in at number 22 is Black Christmas. My review is out on my channel. You can go check that out. I thought this movie was embarrassing. Black Christmas 2019. This is the second remake of this same name, the 1974 Christmas Slasher, and there was another remake in 2006. This movie, I honestly didn't laugh at how bad this movie was. I was just eye-rolling and cringeworthy throughout the entire film. I was cringing at the bad attempts of them trying to scare you or manipulate you. All the main characters are very generic and stupid characters all the way around. They make dumb decisions, the jump scares, are just so bad and so predictable from start to finish and I just wanted to leave the theater so bad but I pushed through to watch through it in its entire length and I can easily say Black Christmas is a heavy contender for one of my worst movies of 2019. At number 21 is going to be Countdown, another example of a really bad studio made horror movie that was released in the Halloween season around Halloween time and Countdown is also absolutely awful but I was laughing out loud just how stupid this movie was. We live in a time of age where now in 2019 we're getting movies horror movies based around social media apps and that's what countdown is this app called countdown and it basically tells you how long you have to live i was also cringing at the awful dialogue there was just random pop culture references to the marvel cinematic universe and game of thrones that one specific scene with that sprint guy like my god who wrote the script to this movie and thinks this is funny. If you're gonna give me an awful movie, at least make it rememberable funny. But this movie is not rememberable at all, and it just is a waste of time and money. Coming in number 20 is The Curse of La Llorona, another installment in the Conjuring universe. And The Curse of La Llorona might as well not exist in the Conjuring universe. This figure, La Llorona, is just one of the more forgettable horror movie monsters this year. This movie might as well be compared to The Nun because it's exactly like The Nun in the certain direction it goes with the characters in this movie as they're dealing with the La Llorona character. And the jump scares to this movie are so predictable in a mile away some promising characters in here they could have really developed but it just ended up going nowhere and linda cardellini is much better than this she might as well do better movies than this curse of la Llorona film that was just made for a buck in the box office just to add 
longing in the Conjuring universe to it. At number 19 is going to be 47 Meters Down Uncaged, the sequel to 47 Meters Down. The first 47 Meters Down I thought was meh, just a stereotypical shark movie, and this movie was much worse. The first one at least attempted to be a lockdown movie where they're stuck in the ocean dealing with this shark, but the thing I hated so much about 47 Meters Down Uncaged is that they try to humanize these college girls. There's this unnecessary sibling subplot, these two sisters trying to sort out their family problems, and I don't care about that in a shark movie. If all that unnecessary drama was cut out of this movie, then I think I would have appreciated more as just a stereotypical shark chompy thriller, but with those in here, it really drags this movie down. At number 18 is going to be the first film that I saw this year in 2019 with my buddy Cody Curtis, Escape Room. I remember when I saw this movie, I thought it wasn't as bad as people were making it out to be. It actually was pretty entertaining for what this movie was trying to go for. I really enjoyed the escape room scenes in this movie. I really liked the first scene in the movie. That was probably my favorite in the heater room. And then there's this really icy cold room they have to try to survive in. Deborah Ann Wall was the best actor in this movie. She was in Daredevil. And Taylor Russell, the main character of this movie, she was recently in Waves, a much better movie, much better performance. All the personalities in this movie really do not mash well together, and it's just full of unlikable characters, but really entertaining escape room sequences, which they should have focused on more in that end end. Should not have happened. Coming to number 17 is Annabelle Comes Home, the other Conjuring Universe film that came out this year. The third Annabelle movie in this movie was a snooze fest. Annabelle Comes Home had a lot of potential to be just as good as Annabelle Creation, which I think is the best Annabelle movie. And this movie had great cast members involved. Madison Iceman, I love her in the Jumanji films. It kind of grace has been in so many movies where she's playing younger versions of characters like Captain Marvel. I really like McKenna Grace and I, Tanya as well. I think one of the aspects this movie could have improved upon is more screen time from the Warrens, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. Very cool to have them in here. They're in the opening 20 minutes of this movie and then they're just out of the movie completely until the final act and we're focused on these young kids. I love the cinematography in these Annabelle movies, like that one shot with the Annabelle doll growing bigger, smaller, and medium sized with rainbow colors in the background. That's probably one of my favorite shot scenes in horror movies this year. And there are some cool concepts, a cool setting, but it's just a really forgettable story they could have improved upon. Idiotic decision making from one character and Annabelle Comes Home just ended up being a schlock Conjuring Universe film. At the number 16 spot is going to be Child's Play 2019, the remake of Child's Play. Mark Hamill was the best part of this movie by far as the voice of Chucky. Do you want to be my buddy? Very creepy. Mark Hamill has a really creepy voice as the Joker. And in here is Chucky, he adds that creepiness and awesomeness. The directions this movie was going was very entertaining, but not a huge Chucky fan I am. It was cool to see some certain kills in the movie. I think the scene with the Christmas lights is probably my favorite scene in the movie, where Chucky kills that one guy. And then we just have very forgettable subplots in here, like this really creepy pedophile guy trying to hit on Aubrey Plaza. Really forgettable. And just full of bad human characters. It's full of bad human characters and not enough Chuck. At the number 15 spot is going to be In the Tall Grass, which was released on Netflix and based on a Stephen King novel. Another Stephen King adaptation this year. I enjoyed some aspects of this movie. Patrick Wilson, another one that he's in this year. Patrick Wilson was probably my favorite character in this movie by far. Really enjoyed the grass scenes in this movie where this kid is stuck in this grass field and then this brother and sister go out to look for him and then it's just a cat and mouse game of trying to find each other. It goes nowhere towards the final act of being very predictable and cliche 
very disappointed, honestly. They could have explored more with Patrick Wilson's character instead of this brother-sister husband type of subplot and it just went nowhere coming in at the 14 spot is gonna be ma ma which stars octavia spencer released on blumhouse they really heavily marketed her character and octavia spencer delivered i loved her really creepy performance as this lady sue ann who comes across these group of teenagers who are drinking beer and so she invites them over to her house to party all night long. Unfortunately, though, the teenage characters are kind of underwhelming in this movie. We want to see more of Octavia Spencer come on screen. And whenever she does, it makes the movie entertaining. Luke Evans is also in this movie. He plays the father of some kid. And that subplot with her and Octavia Spencer was really entertaining. I'm definitely cautious of going over strangers' houses now after this movie, but I was entertained because it has Octavia Spencer in it, so it wasn't so bad after all. Coming in at number 13 is Velvet Buzzsaw, directed by Dan Gilroy, who directed Nightcrawler. Jake Gyllenhaal was so good in Velvet Buzzsaw. This movie has a lot of thriller and horror vibes to it. Dan Gilroy has an interest in direction, and it has a very interesting cast in it. Tony Collette was really great as well in this movie. Davi Diggs and Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things. I think the thing I enjoyed the most from Velvet Buzzsaw is the artistic vibes that Dan Gilroy presents. We have characters that are really inspired and dedicated to what they do. Once the twists and turns go down in this movie, it honestly is shocking to watch. However though, the story does drag a lot for a Netflix movie, and it's totally understandable why it went straight to Netflix and not into theaters. The ending was like, okay, and then the second act was really interesting, but then it kind of goes downhill for me and kind of ruins it. But still, I love the first act of the movie, and I think it is worth a one watch. At the number 12 spot is going to be Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, produced by Guillermo del Toro, based in the iconic horror book series for children. And Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, everybody thought this movie would absolutely be atrocious, like, and totally unnecessary. But this is one of the bigger surprises to me. I actually really enjoy Scary Stories. The white lady sequence, how it was shot, like the Red Room, like it's definitely one of the best shot films for a horror movie this year. And it just presents like a Stephen King story. Like this feels like something Stephen King would do, absolutely. You're not really into it for the humans. I was just really into the scary parts involving the creatures in this movie and it really was entertaining to watch. And some people find it overrated or not that great. I respect your opinion, but for me, I enjoyed this one. At number 11 is gonna be Happy Death Day to You, the sequel to Happy Death Day. Now the first Happy Death Day, I really wasn't a fan of, but I can say I enjoyed this one more than the first one. It was a really fun time at the theater. It took the same plot line from the first one but put its own spin on it. Jessica Roth makes both of these movies watchable. She is so good in these movies. Love her charisma, her attitude, and her badassness as well. She's so beautiful. The way she can take down certain situations and just make some funny jokes. It takes the Groundhog Day plotline and puts it in a creative fashion to it. This sequel does go bonkers and over the top. And I was worried it would be too bonkers and over the top, but I surprisingly enjoyed it more than the first one, so that's definitely saying something. And now we're getting into the top 10, guys. Coming in at number 10 is Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. this was one of my most anticipated movies at the start of 2019 because I love Stephen King adaptation movies and how great they have been. They introduced a lot of aspects from the book, which I really was surprised by how much was in the book done really well to film adaptation but not all the stuff was done well and some of the characters in this movie i definitely wanted more charisma from jason clark and john lithgow the huge standouts from this cast and stephen king has a really cool concept form from this book into movie form after that certain scene involved in the truck i really was interested but then once a certain thing does happen in the final act, it definitely loses steam. 
and it felt like it overstayed its welcome. Coming in at number 9 is going to be one of the more controversial films this year, Midsommar, directed by Ari Aster, the director of Hereditary, one of my favorite horror films this decade, and I walked out of Midsommar, wasn't a fan of it, and it was just okay. Like, this movie is okay, it's not awful, but it wasn't as good nor better than Hereditary. Florence Pugh is fantastic in this movie. She really is great. So is Jack Rayner, Will Poulter, the cast members in this movie give really good performances in it. Ari Aster's direction is fantastic. The cinematography is beautiful. Like all the shots of this pagan cult is so great. All the costumes, the way they're shot, the sunny locations, all the story elements didn't wrap up for me perfectly. It overstayed its welcome with the runtime being two and a half hours long. Haven't seen the director's cut. I probably won't watch the director's cut because I'll probably feel the same way. But still, it's not an awful movie. Midsommar, it's a solid acted movie. Coming in number eight is Brightburn, the evil Superman movie produced by James Gunn. Very okay. Like, I wanted this movie to be amazing, but it was okay. I really enjoyed the balls this movie had, the dark aspects it went in. I love the evil Superman vibes of this movie, of Superman being bad. Unfortunately though, we have to go into the family aspects which are kind of underwhelming compared to the bad Superman stuff. It felt like very muddy with how they explain certain things with this kid in this disease, in this rage he has. I wanted more of that and it didn't really showcase a lot of the emotions I was hoping for. Coming in at number seven is one of the films this year that was totally surprising. I don't think anybody thought would be as good or entertaining as it was, and it totally is one of those. Crawl, produced by Sam Raimi. Man, Crawl was so entertaining and so damn enjoyable. This movie's so intense with the alligators in this film, and it's so thrilling. Like, all how the scenes were shot, with the alligators during the storm. It is some of the best of the year. Kaya Scodelario was really great in this movie and I really enjoyed just the tension, the family drama for this movie and just the intenseful elements. You can root for the characters and I did in this movie throughout the film. You want them to survive and try to find a way out. And that's what I really enjoyed about Crawl. You don't want them to die, you want them to survive. Coming in at number six is Red Rum. Red Rum. Red Rum. Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep. This was definitely one of my more anticipated movies towards the end of the year. I absolutely love The Shining. It's my favorite horror movie of all time and Mike Flanagan was directing this. Mike Flanagan is one of the best horror directors this decade. My god. I do have to say Dr. Sleep is one of his weaker movies but I think Dr. Sleep it is a solid sequel to The Shining and I didn't love it like a lot of people did. In terms of rewatchability, this is definitely not one of the ones I'm going to rewatch constantly but looking forward to watching it again. I thought Ewan McGregor was fantastic as Danny Torrance. Kylie Curran gives one of the best child acted performances this year. I thought she was spectacular. Rebecca Ferguson as the main villain in The True Knots. I found them to be very underwhelming villains in particular not really having much menace and value to them. Sure, some of their agendas, that what they were trying to go for, do make sense, but I wanted them to be more intimidating than they were, and I just felt like they were waste. And now we're getting into the top five, guys. Coming in at number five is gonna be It Chapter 2. It Chapter 2, I was so pumped going into this movie. The first It 2017 was one of my favorite films of 2017 in IT Chapter 2, man, this sequel was very disappointing compared to that first IT movie, but it's definitely not atrocious, but there are a lot of things they could have improved upon here. Bill Hader is the standout by far as Richie. Bill Hader was absolutely great in IT Chapter 2. His comedy, his drama that he brings as Richie, his downfalls as well, he was so good. Loved Bill Hader in here. 
And Jessica Chastain as adult Beverly was also great casting, perfect casting. Pennywise, which was my biggest issue in this movie by far. Not enough Pennywise at all, really. And this movie's two hours and 50 minutes long. Like, my God, this movie did not need to be almost three hours long. Yeah, I understand the miniseries is like over three hours total long, but this my god, it did not need to be this long at all. We should have had more Losers Club stuff. That was the best part of this movie by far. But still, IT Chapter 2 is not awful. I'll need to rewatch it before the end of the year. Alright, coming in at number 4. Just like Crawl, I don't think anybody expected this movie to be one of the better horror slashers of this year. That is Ready or Not. Ready or Not was so good. I really enjoyed this movie. Samara Weaven was so good in this movie. I really loved her performance, her charisma. It really was satisfying to see her character do certain stuff in the movie. They need to make more entertaining horror slashers like this more often because the concept of this movie is so really interesting. And that whole entire final act, the end into this movie was like, Oh my god, they went there and it's awesome! Coming in number three, time to nut up or shut up. Zombie Land Double Tap. Really an entertaining comedy sequel. A sequel that took too long to come out. I love seeing all the cast members back. Woody Harrelson, Tallahassee, Columbus, Jesse Eisenberg, Wichita, Emma Stone, and Little Rock, Abigail Breslin. Seeing all of them with their chemistry and their comedy back and forth. And also one of the more surprising performances was Zoe Dutch. Zoe Dutch was so good in here as this really annoying blonde valley girl who seemed like one of the more annoying characters from the trailers, but she was so funny. Love Zoe Dutch in here. In Zombieland Double Tap, I really want them to make a Zombieland 3. It seems like they are. Coming in at number two is going to be Jordan Peele's sophomore effort, Us. Jordan Peele did a fantastic job directing this movie. I love all the performances. Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke, like some of the most entertaining performances, Lupita Nyong'o should be nominated for an Oscar. And that whole entire twist ending was so great and interesting. Something I did not see coming at all. After rewatch though, it's definitely not amazing and feels a little overhyped after South by Southwest, but still us, I really, really loved how Jordan Peele directed this movie. And it's definitely one of the better horror movies this year but coming in at number one is going to be the lighthouse the lighthouse is seriously my god one of my favorite movies of the year by far when i first saw this movie i was just floored by how damn great this movie was robert pattinson and willem dafoe give some of the best performances of the year and some of the most underrated performances of the year Willem Dafoe, I am super depressed that he has not gotten any award nominations for his performance in this movie. Willem Dafoe is so damn good in this movie. The score, the cinematography, the story, the script, one of the best screenplays of this year. I hope it gets that for an Oscar nomination. And the ending, I absolutely love the ending to this movie. I saw it twice in theaters. And the first time you watch The Lighthouse, you're definitely going to be confused by that ending. I can't see how you're not going to be confused. But definitely watch this movie again because everything makes sense the second viewing. And if you're huge into Greek mythology, then you're absolutely going to eat this movie up. There you have it, guys. That was my ranking for all the horror movies that I saw in 2019. Again, guys, what is your ranking for all the horror movies you saw in 2019? Did you like my list? Do you agree with it? Disagree with it? Thank you guys so much for watching this list. I very much appreciate it. I have so many other end of the year lists coming your guys way, not just horror. It's going to be a lot of work, but I'm looking forward to releasing it for you guys. Thank you guys as always for watching this ranking. All my social media links are in the description below and I'll see you guys in the next video.